An interesting and important property about how the rational numbers relate to the reals is that the rationals are dense in the reals. This means given any two real numbers, there will be a rational number between them. More formally, for every two real numbers a and b, where a is less than b, there exists a rational number q that's greater than a but less than b. That's what it means for the rationals to be dense in the reals, and that's what we're going to prove today. For this proof, we'll need the Archimedean property. Link in the description to my lesson on that. In short, it says that we can find a natural number as big as we want. Now, for this proof, we're going to need to find a rational number, m over n, that's between the arbitrary real numbers a and b. We'll say that m is an integer and n is a natural number. If the rational number is 0 or negative, then the numerator can be 0 or negative, so the denominator can just be a natural number. But we need to find an m and n that are going to make this work. Note that this inequality, m over n is between a and b, is equivalent to this inequality. If we multiply everything by n, we have that the numerator, m, is between n a and n b. We'll begin the proof by applying the Archimedean property. By the Archimedean property, we know we can pick a natural number n so that 1 over n is less than b minus a. Certainly, we can find some natural number such that 1 over that number is less than the distance between b and a. So that's what we're doing here. n is our denominator. This means, of course, that if we started at a, which is less than b, we could jump forward 1 over n and be assured that we're not going to jump past b because 1 over n is less than the distance between b and a. Note also that 1 over n being less than b minus a is the same as a being less than b minus 1 over n. We get that by just adding a to both sides of this inequality and then subtracting 1 over n from both sides. Next, like we said before, we want our numerator m to be between n a and n b. So for our numerator, we'll take the smallest integer m so that m is greater than n a. Obviously, we don't want m to be too big. We don't want it to go past n b. That's why we're taking the smallest integer that's greater than n a. Since it's the smallest integer that's greater than n a, the next integer less than m, which is m minus 1, must necessarily be less than or equal to n a. We'll work more with the left side of the inequality in a second, but notice that n a being less than m immediately implies that a is less than m over n, and that is half of our desired result proven. We've shown that there is this rational number, m over n, that's greater than a. Now we just need to show that it's less than b. Also note that when we divide by n here, we know we don't have to flip the inequality because n was taken to be a natural number. We applied the Archimedean property to get this sufficiently big natural number. If our rational number, m over n, needs to be negative, which it may, m, the integer, the numerator, is going to be negative, not n. All right, finishing this up on the left, m minus 1 being less than or equal to n a implies that m is less than or equal to n a plus 1. But then we can replace the a with this bigger expression b minus 1 over n. If m is less than or equal to n times a plus 1, then it's strictly less than n times the bigger number b minus 1 over n plus 1. But distributing the n through these parentheses gives us nb minus 1 plus 1, which is just nb. And so we have that m is less 
than nb, which implies that m over n is less than b as desired. So we've demonstrated that m over n is greater than a and less than b. Thus, we have found this rational number, m over n, that is between the arbitrary real numbers, a and b. So indeed, the rationals are dense in the reals. Given any two distinct real numbers, there is some rational number between them. And here's something you might be curious about. The irrationals are also dense in the reals. This is actually a corollary. We'll prove it next time, but you can give it a try yourself using our previously proven result to prove this one. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these real analysis lessons helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description. It's a huge help. Thanks for watching. Uh, 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 uh,